and welcome to What Pet Should I Get? My name is Julia Batchelor, and this show is all about finding forever homes for wonderful uh, animals from various shelters. Today on the program, you will meet Claire Forndren from Dogtails Rescue and Sanctuary, and we have Sonia Matheson here from After the Track Greyhound Adoption. And first up, we have Emily Jordan from the Ontario SPCA, who has brought two beautiful animals that, of course, are looking for forever homes. How are mm -hmm. you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Now, before we start talking about these guys, I just wanted to do a quick update about the animals that we've already featured. Mm -hmm. So we've had Sharky, yes, the Bull Terrier. He went home very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> he's a handful, but he's going to be a great pet. <laughs> yeah. Coconut, the guinea Coconut pig. Coconut went home. Yep. And last week we had Georgie Porgy on, mm -hmm. and, and he, he went home. Yeah. And all that remains, we had Illy as well, a beautiful little black cat. Um, you want to show a picture of Illy? Just remind people what he looks like. Look how pretty he is. Now, he's still looking for a home, and he's available at uh, PetSmart and Vaughn. And he's a really nice cat. He's got a great personality, so yeah. I'm actually surprised that he's still there. But he well, seems to like other cats. and it's, a, it's that whole stereotype about black yeah. cats get adopted last. Yeah. And I don't know why. You know, I had a black cat for 20 years, and like, she was the best. She was the best cat I ever had. Yeah, I think it's just getting over. You know, a lot of people, I think, look at you know, cats like this one here, and they think the markings are so much. Pretty. Yeah. Black cats are gorgeous, too. But they are, yeah. Yeah. He looks like a big black panther. You want like a jungle cat. He's a big guy. That's right. It's like a domesticated yeah. panther. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, um, and another thing that I wanted to touch on, um, Recently, it's been in the news, there was a dog fighting uh, ring, an alleged dog fighting ring, we need to say that, mm -hmm. um, that occurred in Tillsbury. And I know that the Ontario SPCA out there has, um, right now, 21 of those dogs are with them. But this has also spurred on the OSPCA to um, start a um, campaign. A campaign. Yeah. Let's talk about that campaign. Yeah, so it's called um, End Dog Fighting. So if you're on social media, you can use the hashtag End Dog Fighting. You can also go to enddogfighting.ca and take the pledge that, you know, you aren't going to support this. Um, we're asking people to look for the signs of dog fighting. If you see an unusual amount of aggressive dogs in a place, if you see people coming and going at odd times of the day, um, you know, anything used to train dogs for fighting, if you're seeing dogs with scars on their faces or their front limbs or hind limbs, these are all signs of dog fighting and to call 310 SPCA or your local police right away. Now, I was shocked to hear that uh, there was dog fighting happening in Ontario. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea of how frequent this is happening? I know, I think within this year there's been three cases in Ontario, so mm -hmm. I mean it's, it's, it's there and it's enough that, you know, it's a concern, something we want to stop for sure. And now, are the dog fighting rings, do you think would they occur more in rural areas because, you know, somebody has to house a large amount of dogs and they need the facility? Or, like, if because you, you're saying people should look out for signs, where would people most likely, you know, find something like that happening? Um, to be honest, I don't know the answer to that question myself. Yeah. Um, it, it may be something that we've we posted um, on the enddogfighting.ca um, website, possibly, but I know the ones that did occur were near the U.S. border, so it may still be something Thing that's a little more prevalent in the U.S., but it does still happen here for sure. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, hopefully, you know, this campaign is really successful. So remember, you want to tweet, um, you find out more information on our website about the end dog fighting campaign, and hopefully, yeah, we can put an end to dog fighting. Mm -hmm. um, Let's talk about these guys. Yeah. So, on a happier note. <laughs> yeah. So you've got a uh, two month old cheesecake, and cheesecake. he is a male. Um, and he's going to be available very soon at uh, the New Market SPCA. And he's a sweetheart. And he's very cute, yeah. Yeah, and I know he's been sitting on my lap um, very, very calm, which is so good for a kitten. And I know I say anytime we get an animal in the studio, they get a little overwhelmed, and he's been great just sitting here. Like, aren't you beautiful? And he came from a home that just had too many animals, so unfortunately he had to be brought in. You know what, this guy's going to go fast. So if yeah. you're interested in cheesecake, you, you probably, I guess, because he's not quite available, but yet, you can but put a hold on him? If you, not quite yet, um, but if you watch the website, when he's posted on the website, you'll okay. know he's available. So just keep checking on there All right. for that little guy. And I have Buster, and he's a five-year-old um, dwarf dwarf rabbit mix and very it seems very well socialized he's very friendly with people at the shelter you can put your hand out and he'll come right up for pets and scratches so he's a very nice guy yeah um, now with rabbits too i know we touched on this with when you had coconut on uh you know the saying about breeding like rabbits yeah. um you guys don't fix small we animals don't. so we we definitely recommend that if you have other gendered pets at home you want to keep them separate for sure yeah um even just in general i mean some a lot of rabbits don't quite like a friend they tend to be kind of territorial so you're probably better off with one anyways but. yeah and i know i used to have rabbits as a kid and they are great pets i mean they're a little bit more timid so it's all about handling mm -hmm. right yeah and um you know i guess there's particular ways that you want to pick up your rabbit and i know one of the things that uh, 
I'm sure most people are aware of now, but just as a reminder, you never pick up a rabbit by its ears. No, definitely not. And what about um, back at the scruff of the neck? I still, I mean, some people like that to kind of get a hold of them, but you can still, if you just pick them up underneath their legs and yeah. then hold them tight to your body, because if you're holding them out in the open, they're going to get scared, and that's yeah. when they're going to kick, and then it's going to hurt, and you're going to want to drop them. So yeah. just keep them tight to your... you got to cuddle their butts. Yeah. 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 Kind of and it's the, the same with them. Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, talk too about. Uh, there was a video and it was showing uh, actually a vet tech who was immobilizing a cat by scruffing the neck of the, of the kitten. Mm -hmm. But uh, how, what are, what's your feelings on that? We do use scruffing. It is a control you know, way to hold them so that yeah. they're not going to bite you or scratch you or stuff like that. But you don't really want to, especially if they're an adult cat, you don't want to pick them up by the scruff no. because, you know, they're too big for that at that point. Yeah, and that's not really way, the way you want to handle yeah. your kitty, right? Um, you know, we have a few minutes left, so I just want to touch on briefly, too, that uh, the month of March is also Adopt a Rescued Guinea Pig <laughs> Month, which yeah. is pretty exciting. Do you guys have any guinea pigs available um, at the Ontario I know we don't have any at the shelter. I'm trying to think if we had any out. I think we have some at... Put me on the spot. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> one of our pet stores. It's on our website, but I believe one of our pet stores, I think it's PetSmart Vaughn, actually, yeah. still has two of our guinea pigs. Well, but. and also, if you go on the Ontario SPCA website, uh, you guys have a large expansion yeah, with the whole PF. Yeah, there's of everybody thing. and where they are, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have, we have Cupcake. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. I'm sorry. <laughs> I gave you the wrong name. So you're not quite sure why cheesecake is on hold. It probably might have to get some more shots. Or get yeah, yeah. Something. So he's just waiting on something, but it should be soon. Any, okay. Any time now. And then, uh, of course, Buster's, Buster's already available. Yeah. And he, both of them are at the new market location? That's right. Perfect. All right, so if you're interested in adopting cheesecake or Buster, make sure you visit our website for all the details. And, uh, yeah, we have uh, a little... Pet Tip with Callie Milliman from the Ontario SPCA to show you right now. Say bye-bye, buddy. <laughs> oh, you're such a good kitty. For everybody at home that has a dog, we all know that dogs love to play and tend to have a lot of energy. Well, here is a great way that you can make your very own dog toy. All you need is an old t-shirt, a t-shirt that's maybe laying in the back of your closet or at the bottom of a drawer, and a pair of scissors. You're going to cut the t-shirt into strips, you're going to knot it at one end, braid it all the way down, and knot it at the other end. You now have your very own rope toy. It's going to be tons of fun for your dog and for your whole family. I'm Callie Milliman with the Ontario SPCA and that is this week's Pet Tip. to what pet should I get and I'd like to welcome now to the studio Sonia Matheson from after the track Greyhound adoption welcome to the show thanks for having us now I've been so excited to have you on because I am fascinated by uh, the world of Greyhound racing how big is this sport well I mean it, it's not as big as it used to be yeah uh, predominantly in the United States because there's no uh, there's no racing for, for money in Canada anymore um, they uh, they have racing in 13 states in the United States and they whelp uh, about just under twenty thousand dollars I'm sorry twenty thousand dogs a year um, to uh, be part of Greyhound racing and what is the life of a uh, racer like? Like, how long are they working at the track before they retire? Well, um, that's a great question. They actually, it really does depend on the dog and the dog's performance. So, uh, when a dog is born, um, they're kept at the at the uh, farm yeah. until they're old enough to go into their maiden races and and to actually start qualifying to be a racer. That happens at uh, just under a year, and then when they're about a year old, they'll graduate and they'll start to. Uh, race and they'll, uh, you know, uh, they'll qualify, of course, to see sort of where they're going to place yeah, them and where they, they're going to race. Yeah, if they're going to be a good racer or not. Precisely, and then they're, that's when they're picked up by an owner. Um, and uh, and really, that that is what determines their life as a racer. So after that, uh, they spend a lot of time uh, on the track, of course, with other dogs. Uh, they spend a lot of time uh, in the kennel being turned out on a very strict schedule. And uh, that just, it, it actually makes them really ideal pets because being um, in such a regimented yep. lifestyle uh, really keeps them you know it keeps them calm on schedule and uh, makes them makes them a little bit lazy when it's not time to run and play. 
Well, I know that Phoenix, that's on, um, he's sitting right there. Yeah, there she is. Oh, she, she sorry. Yeah. I know she's a retired racer. She's five. Is that about yes. the average age that they would retire? Actually, Phoenix retired at a year and a half, so she oh. retired quite early. Okay. Yes. Um, we normally will get dogs uh, retired from the track anywhere between uh, two and four years of age. So they're relatively young when they're, when they're done racing. So you're saying roughly there's 20,000 dogs a year that are in the world of racing, mm -hmm. and if they're retiring on average about two, there's a big need to find homes for these guys. There and this is. is where you come in. This is where we come in. So, And it's, it's great because the National Greyhound Association, uh, they uh, really want uh, outplacement programs. Um, obviously, work with the tracks, make sure all the dogs find great homes. Do you want me to, do you want me to hold on to this one and then you oh, can pull up? Uh, sure. I will we happily. See you want to bring her here. You can take Ohio. Oh, it's okay. Phoenix. You know what? It's okay because they, they oh, have them all right on the camera. <laughs> no problem. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yes. So, um, uh, as I was saying, uh, yes, so we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of great adoption groups um, mm -hmm. all across uh, the United States and Canada, many in Ontario, and uh, that's where we come in. So yep. we will work with the tracks. Um, they'll outplace them to our groups. We bring them up from the United States and put them in foster homes. Yeah. Fostering is the backbone of yes. what we do. Yep. Um, honestly, we are always looking for fantastic foster homes. We pay for everything. All you have to do is open your home and your couch. And so your you're looking life for fosters right now? Always. Okay. We're always looking that's for fosters. That's something to make note of. For yes. Sure. And, uh, a foster usually will only need a foster uh, a dog to be fostered for about three to four weeks yep. so it's it's not a, a very long commitment but it, it is a commitment and uh, and then we will place a dog in their forever home yeah and uh, really uh, ideally like I said only about three four weeks in a foster program and they're ready they're ready to find their forever couch well, I know that both the dogs that we see here today, actually, neither one of these are up for adoption. These are both Sonia's dogs. Mine, yeah. And um, I just want to touch on, too. So we have, he, he, she sits so funny. That's like a... Yeah, it's called Sphinxing. Oh, so she sits that's why she's called Phoenix. Uh, that's, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now... This dog, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yes. She is a retired uh, brood mom. Yes, and uh, definitely, I think it's so important that, that we talk about uh, brood moms because uh, broodies are really the best kept greyhound secret out there. I mean, they are usually they'll retire from breeding a little bit older, mm -hmm. usually around five or six years old. Yeah. And Ohio actually retired a little later. She was she had a lot of West Virginia champions. Um, it was she bred from, from this she dog. She comes from good stuff. She right? really does. And she's she is a Kiowa dog. So um, so Ohio actually retired when she was nine years old, just turning ten. And that's a little late. Mm -hmm. uh, but she was such a great dog. And uh, and really she came into my home. Home. I fell in love with her two years before she retired. Yeah. When she was up for uh, when she was up for adoption, I drove back down to West Virginia and picked her up. Yeah. And she has been perfect ever since. And we get a lot of broodies through our group, and they're always looking for homes. People think that um, you know they want a younger dog, mm -hmm. but sometimes these broodies they are just what the doctor ordered. Well, when look it comes at her. To, she is like oh, the snuggliest dog. She is, and she's just so happy and just so. Uh, you know, just grateful to find her forever home. And uh, she actually, which is not always common with broodies, she's cat safe. And uh, we test them um, for cat safeness and small dog safeness to make sure if you have a cat or small dog in your home, we definitely can place a greyhound with you. Mm -hmm. um, broodies tend to err on the side of not being cat safe because they've lived their whole life with not seeing them, yep. right? Yep. Um, but uh, she was cat safe, so it was great. So, uh, yeah, she's been a great dog ever since. Well, I know right now you said you don't have any uh, greyhounds up for adoption, which I guess is a good thing. It just, like, you're getting them in and people are wanting to adopt these dogs because they, yeah. we know that they make such amazing family pets. It's true. And, and it, it's funny because to say that we don't have any for adoption. Um, you right know, we, now. Right now. I yeah. mean, we, we are getting them. So how it works uh, with our group, yeah. some groups will bring a bunch up, and then once they bring them up, they'll find homes for them. And, and that, you know, works very well for some groups. For our groups, we generally like to have, some folks already lined up yep. and then we pick the best dog for them yeah so someone will tell us you know we don't pick for color that's the one thing I will say is, is, is somebody says oh I want a, uh, a certain color and a certain this well you can be prepared to wait for a little longer and they do come in a variety of, of oh. colors and patterns I know we have a couple photos we do, um, yeah. just, just showing you like how, how different the dogs can look yeah and they do come in 19 official colors and uh, they oh a beautiful brindle here yeah um, this is a uh, bow and he's absolutely beautiful and uh, the two ladies here are what we call red fawn there's another red uh, fawn right there fawn yes right there um, and another font we have a lot of fonts yeah. because I, I personally really like yeah, fonts. Yeah. I tend to pull them um, they come in black and white they come in every color so um, and of course black 
black is a very, uh, that's scully, and uh, they are uh, uh, very common and beautiful uh, black greyhounds. But what we normally do is we assess the family, take a look at what their individual needs are from a dog. So if they say they have cats or if they have, uh, you know, older children or something like that, we will go and try to match a dog that's best for them. Well, that's excellent. Well, Sonia, you know what? We're really running short on time. No um, if people are more interested in finding out more about After the Track Greyhound Adoption, the information, the link to the, your website is on our website. Mm -hmm. And consider a greyhound. I mean, look at these guys. They are wonderful pets. They're calm. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. They are. And uh, we will actually be at the Pet Expo uh, on Easter weekend. Uh, okay. Come by and visit us. Thank you so much. Now Thank we you. have this week's vet tip. Hi, guys. As the temperature begins to plunge, hypothermia becomes a big risk for our pets. While most pet owners do their best to keep their pets warm during the winter months, despite our best efforts, accidents can happen, and you may find yourself dealing with a pet that's been left out in the cold. If you think your pet has been exposed to the cold too long and may be experiencing hypothermia, you should get them to a warm environment as soon as possible. Wrap them in warm blankets and have them seen by a veterinarian as soon as you can. Although it's tempting to raise your pet's temperature quickly using electric heating blankets or other strong heat sources, this is actually more dangerous as raising your pet's temperature too quickly often leads to shock. Even if your pet appears to be feeling better, it is extremely important to have them evaluated by a veterinarian as soon as possible. Even though they may look better on the outside, a veterinarian can ensure that there's no internal damage from the cold. I'm Dr. Melissa Hardy and that's this week's vet tip. Hello and welcome back to What Pet Should I Get? Joining me as always every week is Claire Forndren from Dog Tales Rescue and Sanctuary. How are you doing Claire? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. <laughs> now before we start talking about the two dogs that you have brought today, I wanted to ask you, um, so our first episode you brought Don the dog. We did. What's the status on him? So Don was actually adopted by? last week uh, by a really lovely woman who lives in the area. Oh, I thought you were going to say Danielle. Okay. No, <laughs> not by Danielle though. She definitely was a little hesitant yeah. about letting him go. But, but I'm sure he's gone to a fabulous home. Yeah, he went to an amazing home, and she actually lives in the area and had uh, viewed his television debut. So you guys <gasps> really That's helped. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, so you helped Don got him get that home. Oh, yeah. excellent. Okay, so Fergie, that was on last week. Now, yeah. I know people in the office were in love with her. Yeah, um, as, as are we. So Fergie got some interest this past Sunday at our open adoption day. However, nothing. Not yet has happened yet, but we're hopeful. I mean, she really is such a sweet, perfect dog, yeah. so I think it's just a matter of time. Okay, so we just yeah. want to keep that in mind, you know, every Sunday between 11 and 5? 11 and 5, 11 and yeah. 5, Dog Tales is open to the public, you can meet the dogs, Fergie's there, Yeah. and even if you just want to just spend the day out, I mean, the weather's beautiful, that's such oh, a great place to come and visit. Yeah, it's a great place to spend a Sunday afternoon, totally. and we even have a cafe on site, so you can grab a bite to eat and really make a day of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I also wanted to um, ask you about the... Uh, the shelter that in Israel that the last time Danielle was here she she had purchased it and it had 300 dogs there yeah. now I know the story about about that shelter being bought by Danielle has gone viral it literally has gone viral <laughs> every time I go yeah. on the computer I'm like there's the story it has been crazy I mean we've been getting calls about this shelter from all over the world and yeah it's a little overwhelming but it goes to show that there are so many animal lovers everywhere mm -hmm. that really believe in what she did and want to help and yeah it's really humbling so what's happening there then are all the dogs that were at that particular spot are they being moved around the world or are they trying to make that shelter better? Are they going to like rehab that shelter space? Yeah, so we have a team in Israel right now that's working around the clock to clean up that shelter. Mm -hmm. So there are no more dead rats. Yeah. Uh, the dogs aren't eating bread anymore. They're not ankle deep in mud. So it's come a long way. Okay. Um, it obviously is nothing compared to dog tails. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're simply using it as kind of a place where the dogs can stay until we're able to fly them to Canada. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, this week we flew another 10 dogs uh, from Israel to dog tails. So and slowly, I'm sure but we'll be surely. meeting them in the coming weeks. Yes, you will, and maybe one today. <laughs> well, speaking exactly, speaking <laughs> of dogs from the shelter in Israel, we have two right here. We have we do. Pinchy and, and Revy. And Revy, who's who? Yeah, again? so Pinchy is with the black collar here, the boy, and Revy is the sweet little girl uh, to my left. 
Now you had said they have a love story. They so what's have the love story? Quite a long distance love story. So Pinchy, we actually brought to Dog Tales almost a month ago. Yeah. Uh, he was in the first group of dogs that we brought over from that shelter. And when he arrived, he just seemed really depressed and sad, and we couldn't figure out why. Um, and then we started looking back at footage that we had taken in Israel of these dogs, and we noticed that every shot of Pinchy a that shadow. we had <laughs> had a little shadow <laughs> named Revy. So we realized, you know, this must be Pinchy's girlfriend, yep. and he's missing her. So well, they look we, similar in breed. Do you think are they could they be brother do. and sister possibly? I mean, it's hard to say, right? It's hard to say. Yeah, yeah he's a little lankier than her. Um, he might be a year or two older. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's tough to say. In the conditions that they were in, a lot of the dogs are in worse shape than their age would suggest. Well, I can see um, by looking at uh, at Pinchy, or mm -hmm. Pinchy, yeah, yeah, his. You can see a few like marks and stuff on his ear, but obviously he's healing. But yeah. this came from you said overcrowding at the shelter, exactly. right? Exactly. So I mean, there would be six, seven dogs in each little kennel, and they would just throw loaves of bread in, and the dogs, of course, who were starving, would be scrapping yeah, over fighting. the food, and, and a lot a of guy. them are missing chunks of their ears oh. and have scars and. It's very sad, but when we brought Revy this week and they were reunited, oh, it's it just been this week that they've been reunited. Yeah, it was the sweetest thing you will Did you get ever it on video? see. I wish. <sighs> no, <laughs> no, it was late at night. It was at 10 o'clock at night. We were all half asleep because it had been such a long day, and we didn't video it. But it was really sweet. Yeah, and instantly, I mean, he's become a completely different dog over the past few days. He's so much happier now that he has his love. Um, and she seems pretty happy too. So, well, the, yeah. this story, I mean, the story hasn't <laughs> quite ended yet because no. Dog Tales, although it's a fantastic facility, is it's like it's just a wonderful stopping place. Exactly. So ultimately, we want to get Revy and Pinchy uh, adopted. And the key thing here is we can't break up this Romeo and Juliet love story. Of course not. Right? No, we broke them up once, and we are never going to break them up again. So we need a family that's willing to take both of them. Now I know you assess your dogs always for friendliness with family yeah. and stuff. What's the ideal family for these guys? So these guys, I mean, they're again just two really easy dogs. They're good with other dogs. They're really friendly with people. Revy is pretty shy, mind you. She's this, her whole world has been flipped upside down. Oh yeah, down. she's I in mean, a different so country. <laughs> a bit of an adjustment for her, but she definitely, between the two of them, is more shy and okay. takes a little longer to but open up. But she always up, has, she has Revy as her backup, she right? She does, yeah. yeah. Or Pinchy. Pinchy, Sorry. yeah, Pinchy. By the end of the segment, I'll get their names it's right. It's okay, it's <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, both of them would be fine in a house with kids. They'd be fine with another dog. Um, Cats? Cats, I'm not sure, but based on the way they've been with our dogs, I would suspect they'd be fine. We'd mm -hmm. have to do a meet and greet to make sure, yeah. because you never know. These dogs surprise us. Well, but. You know, I, I find a lot of the times with dogs uh, in particular, it's not so much the dog that has a problem with a cat. Cats have serious problems with dogs. Yeah. You know, like my cat, when he was a kitten, he, the first time he saw a dog, and it was a small dog, mm -hmm. he lost his mind. I'm like, is yeah. that ingrained? Because he was never taught to be fearful to of be dogs. To like that, yeah. You know? Yeah, so I mean, the biggest thing usually that we're looking for is how our dog reacts to a bad reaction from the cat, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's a family with a cat that's interested, we'd be happy to arrange a meeting. That's what I wanted to ask you. Now, um, people who already have a pet at home, does dog tails allow them to bring their dog to the, the sanctuary? Yeah. to meet in case and see how their dog interacts with it can be kind of stressful. Are you do you Exactly. Allow that? So on Sundays when we're open to the public, we ask that people leave their pets at home okay. so that they can focus on our dogs and seeing which ones they have a connection with. Okay. And then if there are a couple that they feel really could be a good fit, we'd schedule a private appointment for them to come back with their pet and then Claire, I got to cut you sure. off. I'm sorry. Okay. We've run out of time, it's but okay. we'll see you next week yes, and for more information will. visit our website. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Thank Claire. you. Bye-bye.